Hi guys. I thought I would do a comparison of the interview that Francis gave, apparently it was 80 minutes long, on his return flight from Rio. On the flight going to Rio, he told the reporters that he didn't have anything to say and interviews were tiring. However, the Antichrist has been energised. He does deceive the whole world. And so he had uh, millions of youth and their energy in Rio for the six days that he was there, all of the activity and their deluded adoration of the Antichrist. So on the return trip it was a, a different uh, energy that he was feeling and much to the surprise and apparently against the advice of his advisors, he gave an 80 minute interview to the reporters on the aircraft and answered very openly their questions. He again absolutely proved to the world in his answers that he is the Antichrist beast. I'll read to you just a few of the most important questions that he answered and then I'll read to you from the document called Vatican III that the Lord Jesus Christ who is returned and his name is Brian then it go lightly Marshall recognized by Pope Benedict on March the 10th when the communications began two days before the conclave which is illegal all of the cardinals were notified that the Christ had returned they should have stopped the conclave. However, they rushed ahead to fulfill prophecy by electing the Antichrist beast, the 666. All previous popes in their positions of the Vicar of Christ, written in Latin, and the Gematria does add up to 666. However, there is only one who can be the biblical Antichrist at the time of the end. And this is who Francis is. He is most definitely the biblical Antichrist beast of the Revelation 17, 11. Pope Benedict XVI himself is a lamb and a saint. He had the humility just days after withdrawing into his retirement when he began communicating with the Christ, he had the humility to recognize him and see God, not only the photograph in the Shroud of Turin, the blatantly obvious for the entire Christian world who has to this point rejected him, again all prophecy, until it came to the man in the position, the highest office as priest and king upon the earth albeit he withdrew for a period of time, but the Christ has not accepted the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. The Christ has already renamed him Peter II or Petrus Romanus because he is Peter of Rome. It all began with Peter and it ends with Peter. For Christians who may be tuning in for the first time, Thou art the Christ, said Peter, to Jesus. Jesus responded, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he gave him the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind upon the earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose upon the earth will be loosed in heaven. I want everybody to pay attention very, very carefully. Those words were spoken to Peter, just as Jesus said, if you are looking at me or if you see me, you see the Father. The Father and I are one, meaning the same soul. It was always the soul of the Father, Yahweh, in the much younger body known as Jesus or Yeshua, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him. It was always the soul of the Father in the younger body, cut off at 33, which opened the door. This is why Jesus is the door to the Father. By having himself crucified by the Jews, it was not the Romans, 
Pontius Pilate was the friend of Jesus and tried to prevent him from being crucified. It was the Jews, it's always the Jews, who call themselves Jews and are not. As Jesus, he was the Father. Peter himself is in Benedict, the same soul. That is why he was speaking prophetically for this day now, the time of the end, when the Antichrist has been flushed out by the conclave that went ahead, even though the Christ announced his return through faxes and emails that went to Rome, went to Washington, D.C., went all over the world alerting that the Christ is returned. It was not until Benedict himself, the priest king or pope king, had the humility to recognize that the Christ had indeed returned and announced it publicly on March the 12th when the image of Brian Lenago Lightning Marshall, his photograph overlaid the image of the Shroud of Turin, it's a perfect match, was uploaded to his Facebook announcing Salvatore Mundi has indeed returned. The Word of God reincarnate in the person of Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. So Peter is Benedict. That is why he is renamed Peter II or Petros Romanus because he is Peter of Rome. He's in Rome at the moment. It has nothing. Petros Romanus is not Francis. He is not the Antichrist. All of the prophetic interpretations in the Christian world, books have been written, they are all wrong. They have missed the blatantly obvious. The eighth king, priest, is Benedict. He returns. He comes out of his retirement because the Christ is here. And under the Christ, he leads the restored Holy Mother Church into Vatican III which is the document, the plan for the restored church written by the Christ, given to Pope Benedict. The plan that Francis, the Antichrist, rejected. Benedict, Petros Romanus, made Francis aware in the meeting, March 23rd at Castel Gandolfo. The media were not allowed in the 45 minutes. The staff, however, were witnesses, the staff of Benedict were witnesses, Father Giuseppe Ciavello, Sister Maria Della Rosa and Archbishop George Ganswain were all present at that meeting. All were sworn to secrecy of what was said in that meeting. However, Francis did give permission to Pope Benedict to record his words, which were total and utter rejection of Benedict's findings, so he has rejected Benedict himself. He has denied outright that the Christ has come in the flesh. It's all about now. It's not about history. It's about now. Everything prophetic. And he denied Vatican III, which Benedict greeted with joy, relief, when he looked at the 49 points of Vatican III, which will be in the description underneath this video. video he felt relief. This is what I will use for any problems that I encounter within the church. So he had already put himself in the forward position of restoring the church under the Christ. He, as the Pope, chosen by the Christ to announce the return of the Lord. An apostolic letter, the links also below this video, was published on March the 26th. At the same time, Benedict had recorded a video recording to go ahead of the March 30th documentary on the Most Holy Shroud of Turin. In that video, Benedict was making the public announcement to all of the world through RAI TV, public broadcasting channel for all of Italy. He made the public announcement that indeed Salvatore Mundi had returned the Word of God reincarnate in the person of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, who is the King of Kings, being the most royal man upon the earth, Golightly Marshalls, through William I, the Lion of Scotland, back through William the Normandy, all 
William of Normandy all the way back to King David. It's all about the root of Jesse. David himself, an adulterer, he did give birth, or rather his adulterous uh, wife Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon, the product of their adultery, which resulted in the murder of Bathsheba's legitimate husband. So David was a sinner. Yes, absolutely, he repented later. However, the consequence of his sin is Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. Solomon went on to marry 700 wives. He had 300 concubines, all of the Moabite and Ammonite, who were straight out of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were the daughters who, by incest with Lot, who escaped the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah by fire and brimstone, got their father Lot drunk, had sex with him, conceived each of them a child, and they became the Ammonite and the Moabites. So Solomon is what populates the earth today. The seed of Cain continued through the evil Solomon, a black witch. And of course he was paid six 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 talents of gold from each of his mom, bite and ammonite wives. So there's your six six six. So that is what populates the world today. His offspring. All throughout Europe and of course through immigration. The United States of America, Canada, Australia, everywhere. Sodom and Gomorrah encompasses the world. The seed of Cain through Solomon. So Elizabeth herself, Queen Elizabeth II, her royal bloodline shows, although I'm sure manipulated, goes right back through with much pride to King Solomon. So just take a look at the royal family. You're all familiar with their goings on. It's all about Sodom and Gomorrah, the seed of Cain. New baby the new baby, of course, December, when uh, the story was that uh, Kate had to go into the hospital coping with extreme morning sickness resulted in the murder of the nurse, the receptionist. It was in no way a suicide. It was a practical joke, yes, from Australia, resulting in the murder by um, the establishment of an innocent. So nothing has changed. Getting back to Francis, let's listen to the words of the Antichrist. He is featured on the cover of Time magazine as all of the uh, satanic uh, elite are. And uh, just listen to what Francis has to say and then I'll read to you from the document Vatican III that was handed to Pope Benedict and he read it through and said it just makes sense. Okay, among other points, Pope Francis, this is what he replied when asked about the Vatican's alleged gay lobby, that while a lobby might be an issue, he doesn't have any problem with the inclination to homosexuality itself then he says, who am I to judge them if they're seeking the Lord in good faith? Question mark, he said. I'd like to point out that uh, the Pope, as the Vicar of Christ, is supposed to make judgment and laws, if you like, as Christ would. So when he says, who am I to judge? What he is doing is he is passing the buck and allowing himself in that feigned spirit of humility that he is so noted for. It's a big play on the word by the mainstream media, his feigned humility. There is absolutely nothing humble about Francis. If he had the spirit of humility with him, he would have stayed with Pope Benedict on March the 23rd at Castel Gandolfo. He would have been with him for hours going through the evidence that Benedict presented him of the returned Christ. He would have been looking at every video possible that the staff of Pope Benedict were so eager to bring to him. 
Instead, the meeting was cut short, 45 minutes end. It ended when the topic of the returned Christ, Mr. Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, entered the arena and he rejected. Five days later, according to Archbishop George Gann Swain, he was still rejecting absolutely and would not acknowledge that Christ had indeed come in the flesh. And then, of course, on April the 2nd, Rome time, it was evening, night time, late, it was already April the 3rd in Australia, which is the anniversary of the crucifixion. It occurred April the 3rd in the year 33 AD. Men hired by Francis forced their way into the papal office to arrest Father Giuseppe Ciavello, charging him with treason for having helped Pope Benedict XVI upload to the internet for the world to know the apostolic letter where the announcement of the returned Christ was made. Sister Maria Della Rosa was also taken away that night and then the very next day from the computer and the email account that Pope Benedict himself had been using in private communication with the Christ, the investigators let the Christ know that they had taken it over, shut it down. There would be no more communication between the Christ and Pope Benedict. He himself has been surrounded by four nuns who are completely in the dark. They are just doing their work, caring for him. All the witnesses to the second coming have been removed from Pope Benedict. Father Giuseppe himself was kidnapped and was reported shot dead eight times, the leaden bullet, the Jesuit oath. You'll see in this interview that Francis says, I am a Jesuit first. And he ponders himself, who should I give my allegiance to? Maybe the superior general, which is the black pope. His own words. Archbishop George Gans Swain knows of these events. We have communications from him. He was with Pope Benedict still by his side until he went to be with the Antichrist Francis and Archbishop George Gans Swain has sworn an oath to Francis to say nothing of the returned Christ to Francis or to anybody else, it would seem. Regarding the swearing of oaths, what did Jesus say? Let your yes be yes and your nay be nay. Anything else is of evil. So the Jesuit oath, most of you know, is an absolute abomination. And yet this man, feigning humility, sitting in the earth, has no problem with the inclination of men within the Vatican, or anybody else for that matter, since he was surrounded by violent gay lobbies, desecrating crosses, naked, covered with tattoos, in Rio. Well, says Francis, it's their inclination. Listen to what the Christ has to say in Vatican III. Point number 13, it's very short, sharp, simple. No mincing of words, the rod of iron. Okay, this is what the Christ has to say about homosexuals. Point number 13, Vatican III. Homosexuals in the church hierarchy is an absolute abomination and will be put out of the church. Point number 14. Officials and any church attendant who is involved in homosexuality will be offered therapy but cannot participate in any office or mingle in the congregation. doesn't really need a lot of explanation. As a matter of fact, it doesn't need any explanation. To the point, ruling with the rod of iron 
for the sake of the children to come. Now Francis continues with his, um, he goes over the Vatican Bank, here we go, argued for the importance of women in the church, yet said Pope John Paul II definitively closed the door to women priests. He called for a deeper theology of women beyond disputed questions such as whether they can be lectors at mass or head Vatican agencies such as Caritas Internationalis. I'll just go down a little further. It, um, this is what he says. A church without women would be like the Apostolic College without Mary. The Madonna is more important than the Apostles and the church herself is feminine, the spouse of Christ and a mother. The role of women doesn't end just with being a mother and with housework. We don't yet have a truly deep theology of women in the church. We talk about whether they can do this or do that. Can they be older boys? Can they be lectors? About a woman as president of Caritas. But we don't have a deep theology of women in the church. On the ordination of women, the church has spoken and said no. John Paul II, in a definitive formulation, said that door is closed. The Christ, on the other hand, says, Point number 21, Vatican III, given to Pope Benedict when he asked the Christ what his thoughts were about Vatican II, which is an abomination. The priesthood. In the past, the priesthood has been in the domain of men. However, women were essential to ethics at the time of Jesus and his ministry. There shall be no limitation on the participation of women in the church who are equally qualified and who elect to be ministers to women and children of the congregation and can preach from the pulpits to both men and women and children. The Christ goes on. Male priests acting as confessors are encouraged to advise women to consult female priests as their confessors as an option. See, there's no doubt in the Christ's mind that women are to be priests or priestesses. Church officials and marriage. Let's continue. Traditionally, a priest or nun or brother could not marry. This created temptations for sin to encroach into the Holy Mother Church. It is inevitable that pregnancy will occur and children born into these circumstances have caused serious consequences to violate the sanctity and holiness of the church and homicide of the infant from abortion to outright murder of the child. That itself needs no explanation. I, as the Creator, it is my judgment that there should be a separate order of priesthood, nuns and brothers, who as individuals prefer an order where they can marry and have children, as I intended men, man and woman to be. Nothing is more sacred than the love between a man and a woman in holy matrimony and the begetting of children made in my image. The Immaculate Heart of Mary as the mother of the Holy Church can act as mediator between the meek and the father, myself 
This is the Christ talking. It must be understood that when I said, let us make man and woman in our image, I was talking to the mother. The Holy Church, therefore, is the spirit of the wife of Christ, the Holy Mother. That's for uh, Protestants who like to hurl bricks at Catholics for praying to Mary and venerating the Mother of God. The Christ venerates her. Entirely appropriate. Now, Francis covers another topic, so that pretty well clears up any questions about the role of women within the church. As a matter of fact, they will lead the church. Okay, divorced and remarried Catholics. He says, this theme always comes up. I believe it is a time of mercy, a change of epoch. It's a karos moment for mercy. In terms of communion for those who have divorced and remarried, it has to be seen whether the larger, it has to be seen within the larger pastoral context of marriage. When the Council of Eight Cardinals meets October the 1st through to the 3rd, one of the things they'll consider is how to move forward with the pastoral care of marriage. Also, just 15 days ago or so, I met the Secretary of the Synod of Bishops. And maybe it will also focus on the pastoral care of marriage. He says it's complicated. I got news for you. It's really very simple. The Christ has already given his judgment to Benedict. And here it is. Point 20 of Vatican III. Let me see. I'm going to count the words in it. Did anybody get anything out of what Francis was saying? No, again, he hasn't a clue. He's going to leave it up to others. It's complicated, he says. Paragraph that long. One, two, in three lines, the Christ has uttered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 words. That includes one is, two ofs, and an or. This is what he has to say on the subject. Divorce is permissible under certain circumstances, adultery, cruelty, Oppression of freedom of thought, oppression physically, or domination under misguided spiritual views. End. Let me tell you this. When a man and a woman are equally yoked of the mind... within marriage, they love each other. There is no need to be cared for by pastors, priests, preachers, or any religious. They have no need for pastoral care. They love each other. They honour each other. anything between them, they sort it out themselves. They are equally yoked of the mind first. Their children are raised to witness perfect love. That is love between a man and a woman in their knowledge, fear, as in reverence and understanding that the Lord Jesus Christ is their Father. And so they rest. The Kingdom of God 
upon the earth with the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ, ruling with a rod of iron as a father does to protect his children. Any father worth their salt does not allow filth and the abominable to encroach within his home, either through TV, radio, internet, or persons who knock on his front door. He is the gatekeeper to the welfare of his family, wife and children. God, the Father, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, is the gatekeeper for the future health, welfare, prosperity, and happiness of the children to come, reflected throughout the earth by every man and woman who know him and readily bow their knee to his laws. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. We are already in the heavenly realm, which is the north side, of the equatorial line of the Milky Way galaxy, where the creation took place. We are in the heavenly realm. Whatever you bind, meaning you do not allow on earth, is not allowed in heaven, is now. And whatever you loose upon the earth is allowed in heaven. Homosexuality, deviant behavior, it's all history child molestation, anybody who so much as verbally abuses a child will be chained. Let alone physically abuses them. Verbally, mentally or physically. Child abuse is a thing of the past. All of the SOS villages throughout the nations around the planet, playgrounds for the pedophiles, the feminists, the lesbians that have ruled throughout the elites, you have no idea what horrors you are about to face. Your angel is about to take you all out. And the horrors that you have inflicted upon the children you will experience one thousand fold the horror that you have inflicted caused aloud and then your souls will be annihilated vaporized nobody will remember you your time is up Francis will lead the way to your annihilation. So, it's really quite simple, isn't it? The Christ you would expect 
take over and solve all problems. Really very simply. Money, nobody's going to have any problem at all with a money supply since the Jews are not going to be around to control it. And what's money based on is based on the value of the human being, your time. Not even going to call it human resources, that's what they do. No. Based on the integrity of men and women made in the image of God. It's all good. So when the Christ takes over the printing, who cares about fiat currency, whether it's paper or not? We don't have to mine the resources to be wealthy. It stays in the ground. Build bridges, roads, railroads, infrastructure. It all adds to the value of the nation that you're in. Everybody should have a the home of their dreams. That's no big deal. It's just a convenience. Paper money, it's just convenient. Of course, healthcare. Well, of course, the Christ has the protocols to cure all diseases. That's really simple. That's what we've been doing. Papua New Guinea and Fiji. Just ask any naturopath out there and anybody who knows what's going on. The suppression of uh, the cure for cancer has been around since at least 1910, probably earlier. So you'd expect paradise to be a place where you can all live and work if you want to, don't have to. There's plenty of people who love to work. I like to work. I like to be busy and occupied. Paid handsomely. Live in the houses that we all so desire. Money really is no object. When the Christ is in control, it makes it available for everybody to live under paradise conditions. And that's exactly what the elite are fearing. <laughs> do what they do. Print the money. It's all about who's in control.